This was made by F. Tharson. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing it, but check this out. This looks fantastic. So obviously for the PlayStation 5, the Pulse headset, and what struck me about it are the little subtle cues to the PlayStation 5 styling now. So that got me thinking. Back in 2020, I designed and 3D printed my own little headset stand for the PlayStation 4. Okay, so maybe not quite the stunner as a Tharson's, but can I retrofit this with design cues from the PS5? Now, I know I'm a little bit late to this game, seeing as how the PS5 has been out now for a number of years, but this little project allows me to highlight three tools from Tinkercad that were really key in helping me design my headset stand. So one of the first things that I wanted to do was to take this headset cradle, this is where the headset actually sits on the stand. I wanted to round off these edges. This is my hallmark here. I don't round off edges for anything and I thought it's time to grow a little bit here and let's try to round off these edges. Okay, so I need to ungroup this object because I need to get down to its basic shapes because this, this setting only appears for certain shapes and one of them being the box. So this is it right here, and it's the radius setting. So right now it's set to zero, that's why I have these very straight, sharp edges here. But I want to round them off using the slider or just simply entering in a value. If I enter in one, you can see now that it's starting to round off those edges. The higher the radius, the more rounding off it does. However, you might start to notice this. Now I already had this shape set to a specific set of dimensions here. And you're gonna notice that the rounding off isn't very uniform. You can see it's kinda of like it's stretched out. Let me show you what happens when we do this on a, by a regular two centimeter by two centimeter by two centimeter cube. And let's take that, select it, and let's put it to a radius of let's say two. Now take a look at the rounding off here. This is much more uniform. It's even. I want this look for this shape. I don't want this stretched out rounded edge there. So this is a weird setting on Tinkercad. What you actually have to do is I can't just take this and stretch it out because if I do that, you can see the same thing starts to happen here where it stretches out that curved edge. What I need to do actually is adjust those dimensions using the sliders here. So this object here is set to a length of 95. If I were to take this, I would need to set the width to 95. Now, if I just put this beside, you can immediately see here that that's the better rounded curve. That's much more even, not like this elongated stretched out curve there. It's a weird setting. I don't know why it does this, but if you're gonna do this for shapes where you're gonna change the dimensions of the shape, you're gonna to wanna to do that using the sliders here. All right, so for the length, the length here is 30. So I'm gonna click this. Go to length, set that to 30. And finally, I'm going to recenter this. The height was set to 10, so I'm going to set this to 10, but I'm going to use the sliders here. Yes, it is a bit clunky, but it is the way to make sure that you can maintain this radius evenly throughout your entire shape. And here is the finished product. There are the rounded edges there. Who would have thought me and rounded edges? Okay, so as part of my design refresh for my headset stand, I wanted to incorporate this feature that we see on those PlayStation 5 consoles, this panel or cover plate here that has this nice swoopy or curved surface, even with a little bit of a twist. I want to incorporate something like this into my design. And obviously I'm not gonna have a standard shape that will fit the bill there. So I'm gonna to have to use a different tool. I'm gonna to use Scribble. I really haven't used it too much and this is the reason why. So I'm just using my trackpad here on the laptop and you can kind of see, <laughs> you can kind of see the problem I'm having here. Um, Good luck trying to draw anything with any type of accuracy. What I wanna do is I wanna create kinda of like a curved panel here, and I wanna use the scribble tool to make that happen. Now I can use the mouse. I think mouse would give me a better, oh, would give me a better result. 
So again, trackpad, mouse, it's not ideal. If you have access though to a tablet, iPad, or an Android, Tinkercad does make an app for the tablets and this is a perfect opportunity to use that interface to help you out with the Scribble tool. Let me show you. Okay, I am recording the screen now on my iPad. I'm in that same project, I logged into my same account, and I'm now going to use the Scribble tool. So I'm gonna select it and then just drag it onto the surface there. Now this is where this touch screen interface really comes in handy because I'm just using my finger here and right away I have much better control over the shapes I'm drawing. And if you have a stylus or an Apple Pencil for your iPad, it is a much different experience. And I feel like the Scribble tool now actually has some potential here using something like the iPad. Actually, this curve is actually not too bad. I don't mind that one actually. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to continue editing this, but I'm gonna edit it now back on the desktop. I'm gonna click done. Okay, back on the desktop now, and I can just select this, edit this like any other shape. And these are gonna be the plates that I'm gonna use and incorporate into my new headset redesign. But yes, the scribble tool. Very handy, especially if you have an iPad, a tablet. You can even try your iPhone. And here are those panels. Not too shabby. Typically when I 3D print, I don't like to use a lot of support. So when I make projects like this, I often will print them up in pieces and then assemble them afterwards. What I like to do is use stuff like this just to ensure I have the proper alignment and a little bit of surface area there for the adhesives to allow these pieces to stick together. I'll create these little tabs that'll stick into the side here and then have it go into uh, the other piece that will basically then insert onto that tab there. This is a great way to illustrate this ability to toggle between objects being a solid or as a whole. And what you need to consider as you try to create things, if your intent is to create this tab to fit in a certain size hole, there are some things to consider. If I were to just create a simple copy of this, like that, I would just need to create a hole of that same size, right? Well, just be careful here. So if you just go to a straight one-to-one -one switch between these two, when you actually print this up, this tab will not fit into a hole that is the exact same dimensions uh, as that tab. And you can blame the way the slicer is throwing down the filament, the fact that the filament, when it's coming out of the extruder, tends to bulge out. You need to make this hole a little bit larger so that this tab can fit in nicely without you having to sand it down. And what I found works for me is to add 0.4 millimeters to it. So if I were to take this height, the height here is 2.2, I'd make this 2.6. Same thing for the width of this tab or the, the length of it, 15.4. Now when it comes to the depth of this, when this tab slides into this particular hole, you can keep it the same, it's up to you. But at least you wanna make sure that this tab can slide into this hole. You're going to need to make the dimensions of this slightly larger. And again, for me, 0.4 works. All right, so here is that tab that I showed you in Tinkercad and taking that tab piece, slightly enlarging it and then embedding it into this side panel that I want to attach to this arm. You can see that the fit is perfect. No problem getting it on and yet it's snug enough that it doesn't come flying off. All right, here it is, the big reveal. This is what it looks like, at least in Tinkercad incorporated those panels, those PlayStation panels there. You can see I've maintained basically the same frame. I've changed the base of it a little bit to, to take on the design elements of the PlayStation 5. All right, the new headset stand is done and all assembled. Again, just a way to help illustrate some of those tools in Tinkercad, which can definitely help you in your own projects. All right, hope you like the video. We'll see you all next time.